So welcome guys on how to impress a recruiter and get your dream job. I was scrolling through TikTok a couple of days ago and there was a couple of case studies that showed up. I'm like, oh my God, perfect. Let me talk to you guys about it. So what I'm going to be talking to you guys about is absolutely common sense. I am not going to be talking from someone that's looking for a job's perspective. Hello, Con. I'm going to be talking from, hello, my dear. I miss you. I haven't seen you for like 10 years face to face. Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys um, from a, a CEO that wants to always grow the team and bring the right talent. So I'm going to be talking from someone that is looking for talent. And one thing that I like you guys to keep in mind is the same way that you want the job, we as CEOs and founders or recruiters, we are desperate for talent. And I actually had a conversation with Con that I'm surprised to see him. It's an honor to see him here with us because I had a conversation exactly about that because he was talking about this opportunity of applying. And I'm like, Con, the reality is that you're doing them a favor in applying. You're doing them a favor in joining the company because you've got unlimited knowledge. And this is what you guys need to see is all everything in life is about collaboration. So when you apply for a job, apply for a job that you can add value in the business. And that's how you're going to be able to get the job. So remember, you're not applying for the job. You're doing them a favor in joining the organization and sharing your superpowers, your skills, and your knowledge. Because if a company is advertising for a role, it's because they need your talents to be able to continue succeeding. So see yourself as part of the success of the organization when you apply. I'm going to be sharing with you guys some personal experiences of some amazing things that I've seen over the years that I wish that I had this sort of behavior and creativity when people are applying for jobs. I personally get CV sent to me almost on a daily basis. Most of them make absolutely no sense. I'm like, what the hell is this? Why are you even contacting me? We continuously at a camp to advertising for different roles, whether it's through paid ads, through Seek, LinkedIn, and so forth. And the stuff that comes to us, we're like, do you even know anything about our company and the, thing, the place that you're applying? So you have to look at what are you applying, why you're applying, what are your values, and how can you add value? And if you truly believe you can add value to that organization, then it's about connecting the dots to convince your future boss or the recruiter on how you're going to add value. So for those of you, I think I know most of you guys here because I can see lots of familiar names. Um, so please connect us with Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, in, like everywhere, everywhere. And you can reach out to us at any time. We're here to support you guys so you can succeed more and more every day. Half of you guys are logging in from Zoom. So for those of you that are logging in from Zoom, leave your camera on, ask as many questions as possible. If you're logging in um, from Facebook, you can pop your questions over at Facebook and Kiara will keep an eye on it so that she can answer the questions for you guys. But feel free to stop me at any time. So this, I actually just pulled out of the internet right now. Like I, I pulled this information about 30 minutes ago. So in the last financial year, Seek, which is one of the biggest platforms for you to, as a company to find talent, has had an increase of 12.6% compared to the year before. So that means that in the middle of a global crisis, Australia is more desperate than ever for talent. And we have seen some sh little shifts around the last lockdown, this current one. But I remember a week before this all happened, there were 100,000 positions in hospitality just in New South Wales in the month of June available, 100,000. So when people tell me that they can't find a job, I just go, slow down. Let's go back to your life purpose, what kind of job are you looking for and how can we start molding your image online, your CV, your LinkedIn presence and start networking because the reality is that there are jobs out there and Australia has one of the greatest economies and one of the greatest opportunities ever. So it's just about connecting the right dots, which is one thing I want to be talking to you guys about. So it's very important for you to do your homework before you apply. So these are just some things that came like just off the top of my head as I was designing these slides today for you guys. What job do I want? So make a list of the companies or the jobs and roles that you want. Why do I want this job? Is it because of the lifestyle? I'm going to wake at Google and get free laundry and free food. Is it because of the network? Because I'm looking at setting up a business and I want to expand my network where I want to be around this network of like-minded billionaires or social impact leaders, or I love, I've got a friend that loves train. So he wants to be around the community of people that love train. I've got a friend that loves submarines. He wants to be around people. So what is it that you're trying to get out of this job? What are my values? This is 
so important. So what are my values and which values for me are non-negotiable? For example, I've been headhunted by iTunes and Diageo. And iTunes is part of Apple, which is one of my favorite brands. But my life purpose is not selling music online at iTunes. And this was 10 years ago. Diageo, I love a cocktail or a glass of champagne. But I'm not going to jump out of bed to help people get access to more alcohol. Like it's not aligned to my values when I am working. So it's very important because when you apply for a job that is aligned to your values, it's easy to get yourself through the recruitment. And guys, it's not just about getting the job. It's about maintaining the job and succeeding in the job. Because getting the job is one thing. You could, get, you could get fired on the first day, in the first week, or maybe you won't get along with the culture of the organization. It's very important for you to set up a plan. What is my working style? Do you want to work in a startup? Like I get a lot of people wanting to work for me and I'm like, do you understand that you're going to work 24 hours if you join Academy of Entrepreneurs? We live and breathe. We, we go for runs. We jump on planes to do social impact projects. We'll be living and breathing the brand 24 hours. And anyone that doesn't have that energy shouldn't be joining at Camp Spinners. I had this girl inter interviewing and interning with us for a few weeks. And right in the first, like she interviewed really well. And in the first week, she had a really nice personality, but very slow. And I looked at her. I'm just like, where do you want to work? And she just went in government. I'm like, I can tell. Go and apply for a job at a government. Working at Academy of Japanese, doing an internship will not help you with your career because government has a different way of working. Another one is corporate. We recently, this, like in the last couple of months, we had someone joining us who was good, but not for Academy of Japanese. He was good for the corporate world. And I had an external recruiter bringing him in. And I told him from the beginning, this person is not going to survive our level of energy and passion and the youth that we have in the team of just this never ending like creativity and innovation because he was used to the corporate world. Where do I find this job? Most and some of the best jobs, they're not advertised on LinkedIn and Seek. 99% of the people that have joined Academy for Nurse have either approached us or seen something that we posted on Instagram, not even on LinkedIn. So can you see? It's what job do I want? Why do I want it? What are my values? What is the lifestyle? And where do I find it? How do I stand out? Which I'm going to be sharing with you guys two amazing examples. And also, how hard am I willing to get a job in this organization? Because anything you want in life that you work really hard towards, you will get it. Anything, I can guarantee you. But how hard are you willing to work towards it? So I'm going to be starting today with showing with you, sharing with you guys two case studies. And then I'm going to break down LinkedIn and use LinkedIn as the best platform. So you can get the attention of recruiters, build a relationship, the trust, and then succeed. So if you are too cool for school, if you're like the coolest kid in the university, or you're between your friends, just too cool, always the stylish, happy, unique, and you want to have a work hard, play hard lifestyle, you want to be extremely Instagrammable, you want to be around celebrities. You want to run on fun, crazy campaigns with limited timelines. You love the adrenaline of the challenge. A cool company for you to join could be something like Spotify, where they get access to the best artists, got one of the coolest algorithms. It's got a cool brand and all of the artists are found there. This girl over in the United States was about to graduate from her university and she put together a resume for her dream job, for a job that was not advertised. She did not apply, she tweeted it. The CEO of Spotify found, got, heard about it and he interviewed her herself and she got the job. What did she do? She had the cool Spotify attitude, swear word, Spotify themed resume for my dream job as a project manager and she tagged Spotify. It went absolutely viral. And the way she designed her resume is to look exactly like the Spotify account. Did she get the job? Yes. Is she going to get promoted? Absolutely. Is she amongst the CEO's favorite? I can guarantee you. So can you see, instead of her 
waiting on Seek and on LinkedIn, writing 150 cover pages. It is said that for every 1,000 jobs that we apply, one is a real job and is aligned to what we want. Are you going to be applying for 3,000 jobs to get pulled into three good jobs? Or are you going to create your own job? Don't apply for a job, create it. And this is what she's done. Unbelievable, right? And remember, she was a university student. I want to share case study number two. I'm not going to mention the name right now, but you guys will be meeting him very soon because we've just organized to run four webinars with him in alignment with a project that we're doing with Study New South Wales, funded by New South Wales. Study New South Wales. Um, so case study number two. I have this friend who has always, so he was born, I can't give too much detail right now because he will share the story. His father was the CEO of probably the biggest food business in the world. So he was raised every two years in a different country, had access to unlimited money, unlimited connections. And his father being a leader, he also wanted to have a world leader position with the lifestyle. He had been an entrepreneur for many years. Being an entrepreneur has its ups and downs. He had a lot of wins, but it just got to a stage of his life. Just went, you know what? I want to join the biggest company in the world like my father did, but I want to go into at the time of his father's generation, it was food. Now it's in the tech space. So obviously he wanted a job at Google. He is a huge fan of work hard and finish early. He, when he works, like, cause I work a lot with him. He's so structured and so efficient that it's mind blowing. But do not contact him past 4.30 because he's not gonna work. He wanted to work in a company with the energy of a startup, but where he had endless growth. He wanted to work in a company where he could work anywhere and everywhere. But he also, at this stage of his life, wanted the stability. So he had been an entrepreneur from the age of 30 till 26. And then he decided that he wanted the stability by being a world leader. What did he do? He search ends and optimized his profile and became the number one on Google, which was the company he was applying for a job. He spent, I think it was 150 or 200 US dollars search engine optimizing. So he proved to Google that he could search engine optimize his name because he understood Google ads and algorithm. Did he get called for the interview? Yes. He was involved in opening Google in 29 countries at the age of 26. So can you see when you apply for a job, don't apply for a job, create the job. Can you see how the mindset is different? Because both of these, the Spotify girl, I don't know, this friend of mine from Google, he wanted the job more than anything, he was willing to die for it to get it, got it, but not only get, you also need to maintain the job. So it's not just about getting attention, is about having aligned values and continuously being able to deliver. So write down, right now, I'll give you guys a minute. What is your dream job? And it's kind of like manifest it and have a vision board and describe it. What would you do in your dream job? Are you going to surf before? Are you going to get free laundry? Are they going to send a chauffeur to pick you up? Are they going to send you on volunteering projects around the world? Are they going to have give you a rooftop office? Are you going to get unlimited first class tickets or you're going to get a personal assistant from day one what is it that matters to you and don't worry about being superficial what is your dream job and why is it your dream job how are you going to get it and what are you going to do once you get it i personally have the best job in the universe but one day I would like to be one of the heads of the United Nations and work for free and give even more impact in all areas that I've been working on a business level, but at a government level. Why do I want it? Because I care about impact. How am I going to get it? Through all of the work because I work with them almost on a daily basis. So I'm already building the foundation for 30 years from now. And what will I do? I would happily be amongst the top 10 people at the UN so I can create even more impact together with them. Will I get the job? I've already been offered many times, but I don't want to now because I don't want to work for someone right now. I want to work for myself because I have a lot of freedom, which is what I want now. So it's very important. Some of you guys have seen me talk about being an authentic leader. 
Be true to yourself. What's the lifestyle? What are the skills that you have? And we can always develop new skills. I was speaking to Khan the other day when he was talking about the job that he was applying. And he said, I didn't have these skills. And I said, we don't hire based on skills. We hire based on attitude. Everything, like Kiara. I'll give you guys an example. Kiara has been part of the AE community for over three years. She's joined a couple of courses. Every time we post something that was really impactful, she would share with her community. She was our ambassador telling everybody on her Instagram and Osun Bondi how amazing a camp spinners was. Then we had a few roles and she would ask me some questions around it. And because she was always involved with it, she didn't apply for the job. I went to her and I just went, we have this role. Would you be interested? We brought her in. Then a girlfriend of mine that you guys will meet tomorrow, we're doing an Instagram live, who's a very famous YouTuber, Instagrammer. This girlfriend of mine called me last week, just going, Paula, I'm launching this program. And I just went, can I buy one for Kiara to do? Because I know that she can now get this next skill to help us grow as a business. We as a business, we're looking for the attitude. And I know that any course that I recommend to Kiara to do, she will happily do it because she always wants to learn not only for personal reasons, but also because she wants a camp spinner to grow her impact. So what's your dream job? Because once you find the job that you really want, it's super easy for you to convince the CEO, recruiter, founder, and so forth, anywhere. And be yourself because absolutely everyone else is taken. It's by you being yourself that you're going to be able to stand out. If you look and talk and sound like everybody else, first of all, most people won't even believe. And then you're going to lose your uniqueness and you're not going to stand out and you're not going to get the job and focus on doing what you love every day because when we work for a company that we love with the values that we love that is supporting us and we're supporting them everybody wins and remember the culture fit and attitude especially in australia is more important than everything else because it takes one wrong person with the wrong attitude to pollute your whole environment so we as organization would rather have someone that we're going to bring in and train but that fits in the culture and has the positive attitude or the attitude aligned to our values and our company growth than the other way around. Any questions before I talk to you guys about how to use LinkedIn? Because it's obviously the easiest way to get your network and your, your profile in front of recruiters and future bosses. Any questions, guys? No? Okay, cool. Okay, let's talk about LinkedIn which is one of my favorite social media platforms. How do you create a winning LinkedIn? So LinkedIn is where, according to Google, 96% of recruiters use it. I think 100% of recruiters use it in one way or in another. It's where business gets done for you to hire, for you to scale, for you to network, for you to sell things. And it's where you promote yourself. If you wanna get a proper job, you need to have an absolutely perfect LinkedIn. And the tips I'm going to share with you guys are super easy and doable. You can do them today and will make you stand out because it's going to give the credibility and it's going to look professional. Because if you want to get a professional job, it needs to be professional everywhere. I see so many people spending so many hours on the CVs and copy pasting cover letters and just tweaking one word. We don't look at those things. We look at LinkedIn. So personally, it's the first place I go. So once in a while, we get some mind-blowing CVs coming in our way. And Elise sent me a very interesting one a couple of days ago. And the first thing I saw when I saw the guy's name, I copy pasted the name of the CV and I went on LinkedIn and I literally deleted the email. I didn't even read the CV because I want to see what the person is publicly. So things that we look at, who do you know? That's the first thing. So someone that has more than 100 connections with me, I will respect a lot more. What skills do they have? And not as in degree, but what skills have then been endorsed? And how well do they present themselves? Do they have a banner? Do they have a real photo? Have they put information on the bio? Those are the things that we look at. I can see you guys are taking lots of notes. You guys can send us an email at the end of today and we can send you the slides and the videos getting live streamed on Facebook and you guys can keep the recording as well. So don't worry about writing it all down because you guys get to keep the recordings. So in the past, People used to look at these resumes with pages and pages and pages. They read every sentence of it. These days, we look at who you are and we will spy everything from you. Everything. If someone doesn't have Instagram, I will question them. And I probably won't even let them into the organization because we're a social business and I need everybody to be everywhere. 
I remember there was this one girl that was so good for a role that I was advertising. This was about five years ago. She was so, and I knew her. She was part of my network. She wasn't my friend, but I knew her really well. And she had the right skills and attitude. And I really knew her. But at the time, I went to our COO, the chief of operations, and I told him, like, speak to her, but let me just scan some things. And then I saw her Facebook account and the photos she had in there. She was absolutely wild, but like absolutely wild. Like the stuff she was posting, her photos, her comment, and I just went, ah! even though she can give me results, she, just, she won't fit into the culture of the, the business. And I can't have someone talking about doing social impact in the world while they are, I can't even go into details of what she was doing on the photos. Like it was just, it was ridiculously embarrassing. So be careful. And remember that you can post something. I mean, unless you post an Instagram story, the things could potentially evaporate if someone knows a screenshot. A lot of things that we post stay there forever. You can, you can delete stuff or your image can end up in a blog or it's everywhere. So everything is online. And it could stay there without you even having been able, without you posting. So be careful. So things such as, I don't know, when I go to events, like I always am very careful with my image because I work with government and different religions and da da da. And like you have to be so careful. Like if you've had too much to drink, get out of the event. You can't have your photo taken. You want to be dressing in a way, like I don't know, if you're going to be doing whatever it is that you're going to be doing. How can you respect your audience? If I'm going to be on stage, I'm not going to go in a mini skirt because as soon as you sit down, it's not right. If I'm going to go to the Middle East, I will go with different patterns and I'll take a headscarf to cover myself in respect for them. So know that every day, all day long, you're getting watched, especially through social media. So it's even worse that you're posting that image of yourself. And this is why it's so important. Let me go back to what I started here. What job do I want? Why do I want the job? And what's the lifestyle? Are you joining a company like WeWork that's going to take you to music festivals and you can go absolutely wild? Are you joining a government position where some women wear even like a shirt and a tie in the government? <laughs> I've seen that. What is it? What are your values that are non negotiable? What are the things you're going to tolerate with your boss or not? Like as girls, there's men that are absolutely rude to women or do you accept a male boss flirting with you? I wouldn't, I would punch them because it's, I'm here to do my job and create impact and work as a team, not. But some people, I've seen a lot of girls that they're willing to do whatever to get the promotion. So it's important for you to be firm and authentic and honest with your values and your goals, because all of that will have an effect on getting the attention, getting the interview, getting the job, keeping the job and getting ideally a promotion. Let's go back. So first thing, very basic, but most people get it wrong. Your photo. Take a photo. If you have an iPhone, put it on portrait mode, put it on a selfie holder or something, a stand and take a photo of yourself. Yeah, looking straight into the camera, smiling. Depending on the industry that you work, put gently something in the background that makes it aligned to what you're doing. Bad examples of photos, don't crop. A profile photo is a profile photo. It needs to be taken for LinkedIn specifically. Don't stretch. Don't do something of you in a social life. Also, have a look at how it fits within a circle. So if you've got one of the Google phones, they've got the feature of taking the photo in a circle. This is an example of an architect. And you can see that this was taken, like it doesn't even need to be taken by a professional camera. But he's smiling, friendly, but not laughing, approachable. It looks like he likes what he's doing. And he's got the buildings in the back showing that he's an architect. And you see, it's these little gentle touches. Next one is a description. And this is where, again, a lot of people forget it. Don't leave anything blank. As you're filling out your LinkedIn, LinkedIn has a progress bar that helps you understand what is missing. And honestly, this is your chance to sell yourself. So it's so important that you shine the right light into what you love doing. Add a little bit of your personality. For those of you that English is not a first language like me, have a friend or a couple of friends checking your spelling mistakes. 
So, and I love seeing things like a little paragraph and dot points just to make it easy for people to read. Another thing that really helps is having a banner that people can straight away connect and identify what you're looking for. So if you're into sustainability or marketing and digitalization, on my one, I put Boss Your Future because I'm all about that. And it's interesting because I have friends that work on LinkedIn that have stolen my banner and put it on this, which is really cool. So we're building a business. We've just invested into a business and her profile is going to have Boss Your Health because we care about people's health through her organization. So just have fun there. Put a list of your achievements, not just your responsibility. If you're the marketing manager or digital marketing manager, it's kind of obvious that you're working with these platforms and so forth. But talk about what difference you made in the organization and as much as possible, put numbers. So this is an example. I ran a PR firm for nine years here in Australia, well, almost 10. And on the achievements, I had winner of the Rotary Australia's annual community project, grew a client's sales by 720% in three months, and over 30% of our clients had won a Business of the Year awards through the work we had done. Can you see? Like, I'm the founder. It's obvious that as a founder, you are pitching contracts, you're managing team, da 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 da, da. So I don't need to talk about what you do as a founder or a manager, a general manager, receptionist. Like, all of that is common sense. Focus on the achievements so you can stand out based on the results that you gave to the organization that you worked in. Here's an example of where people underdo it or overdo it. Um, restaurant worker Sam, working from this until present is always nice because it shows that you're still needed in the market, always makes a difference. So if you work as a waiter, seat at customers and waiter tables. Like, isn't that common sense? Some people absolutely exaggerate. Dining experience liaison, managed customers, traffic flow, and all of this sort, table by table, meal preparation and delivery. Like it's just go for a balance. Just what was the size of your restaurant? Served on average 35 customer tables per eight hour shifts. That means that you've got good organization skills. Trained six new um, employees. Wow. So you're good at managing your own set up but also you're managing people up so that they can all work together promote it amazing within three months of the job that means you're going above and beyond can you see how it's just the perfect balance so you went from waiter to seating customers to managing traffic flow you're applying for a hospitality job to going i manage 35 tables train six staff and got promoted in three months let's have a chat and my suggestion is if you're going to apply for any job, check their Instagram, check the TikTok website and refer, just go, I loved the blog that you guys posted four weeks about this. Completely agree. And the new thing on the menu, the new chocolate brownie that you guys posted yesterday, can't wait to try it. Show that you've done your research. I remember I had this guy, oh my God, applying for a job with us. Um, I don't remember what the role was, but he applied for a job. And first thing, it was the like, first thing I asked him, I said, why did you apply for the job? And he told me, because I really like the website. We did not have a website. We had barely finished designing the logo of Academy of Entrepreneurs. So how hard is it to skim over the blog, the homepage of the website and social media? You can do it in 30 seconds each. But know what you're applying for. And this is why it's important. What are your values? What's the lifestyle? What company do you want to join? Did he get the job, the guy? I straight away, half, like halfway through his sentence, I just went, my dear, thanks, Benu, thanks. Another thing that I think really, I've helped a lot of students at Accounts Spinners get a job is with this little technique, which is so simple and so powerful. So say you are Kiara and you absolutely love sustainable fashion. You are naturally gonna read about sustainable fashion on Instagram, on blogs, you're gonna have a community, the local paper, you're gonna be drawn to that topic. So if you can get a job in a sustainable fashion organization or social enterprise, that will be the ideal because you already have the passion, you have some connections, you have ideas and you have the expertise. So whatever it is that you love and you're looking for a job in, my suggestion is start collecting blogs. Whenever you see anything interesting, just share it. Because then you're going to be associated with an expert in the topic. 
But the reality is that you're not writing at this stage. You're just sharing. I have a lot of people that come to me and just go, I love the stuff you post. I always learn so much. So they use me as the channel for news on startup. Because they know that instead of going through the online world, which has got too much, if they come to me, they're going to get access to some cool trends on LinkedIn. So what are the lists? Create a list of whatever topic you go into, construction, fashion, startup, fintech, ag tech, it doesn't matter. What's your area of expertise? And stop positioning yourself as a leader by just sharing relevant articles. And my suggestion is get maybe one to three sentences that are connected within the blog that you call your attention the most, it could be stats. And what I do is I just put quotation marks, I copy paste and I link the link, the URL in the bottom. And then people get the attention of where I thought was the most interesting. And then if they're interested, they'll continue reading, but you've kind of like summarized the summary for them. And if you want to take it to the next level is join relevant groups and start sharing them there. Because as soon as there's a position, if they know the Kiata three times a week shares in that group, one post on sustainable fashion, when they need someone to do digital marketing for sustainable fashion, who are they going to think of? Her. And the algorithm of her social media will start connecting her to more like-minded people and she can grow her community and her network. Also, make a list of over 50 groups in this area that you're interested in. Because most groups is where we post jobs. Most groups are where you have the latest information and is where like-minded people network. So when there is an event, when there's an opportunity, there's an investment, there's a grant, there's anything, it will be there. And put in your calendar, five minutes. So maybe if you have your lunch break, let's say at 1230 Stick your food in the microwave or whatever it is your process for cooking and then block five minutes in your phone that it will ring every day at that time and you spend five minutes a day just navigating blogs and groups aligned to your interested topic. Another thing is if you're an entrepreneur, this doesn't matter at all, but if you are looking for a job, recommendations. And it's hard like sometimes asking for your boss for a recommendation to kind of like you might feel a bit awkward because it looks like you're applying for a job, but maybe ask your colleagues for it. And the best way for you to ask for a recommendation is write a recommendation for someone and then just tell them, can you please put a couple of recommendations in alignment to this of how I worked well as a team, I'm good at project management, organization, on creativity, whatever it is, the role that you're applying for, guide the person. I get all day long people going, Paula, can you write a recommendation about this project? We work together. And I always say, what do you want me to write about? What role are you applying? Because I can write on how nice you were, how friendly, how efficient, how compliant, how creative. What are you going for? So guide the person. So the best way to get a recommendation is write it and then ask them to write one back and be specific on what you want them to write about. Or if you want to make the lives easier, just even pre-write it and get them to tweak it with their own words afterwards. And think about it all from everything that I've shown you guys, it's common sense. So don't think about someone that's desperate for a job. I see so many people just desperately sending hundreds of resumes. Don't be that person. Think of the other around. How can you be like the Spotify girl or the Google guy? If you want to get the Spotify role, how hard is it to design your CV to look like that? If you're going to get a job at Google, make it look like Google and show that you know how to use the Google solutions. So if you're going for a marketing role over the next month, share content linked to marketing and start building your community. Start engaging with recruiters in that space. And if you want to take it to the next level, start writing your own material. And writing your own material doesn't mean you need to go from scratch. I wrote a blog once on the difference between entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship. I already knew the difference, but I read about 15 blogs and wrote my own. And until today, people still comment and view it. So just write about topics that you care about, links to these jobs that you're going for. I had this guy friend who wrote an article, linked it to his Twitter, got headhunted by a humongous business in New York, and within a week later, it got flown over to New York for the job. Like it was just crazy, just because of a blog that he wrote and he tweeted and the right person saw it. And this is why it's so important for us to look after our image. The same way that we 
walk out of our houses dressing nicely, we need to look after our online presence. Cool, guys. So this is the summary of the summary of the summary. Just reminding you guys that on Thursday, we're doing a program with one of our legends at Academy of Entrepreneurs in AE Valley, Joy, talking about how she made $10,000 through her Kickstarter campaign before she even started her business. So there are opportunities everywhere, whether it's applying for a job, starting a business, a crowdfunding, or cross-promoting all of them. So join us on Thursday this week to find out how you can also start your kick um, starter campaign. And as always, reach out to us. We have a million programs to help you guys. We have 500 that are advertised through our website, and we have a lot more in the back end. Tell us what you need. I personally think that the best two ways to succeed is taking some time to find our life purpose and working on our emotional intelligence. Because once we know what we want, and once we know how to connect with ourselves and others in the community, we're going to be able to drive all of the change. We're able to get engagement, connection with the recruiter, with our boss, with our clients, with our colleagues, and so forth. So most of you guys already have my private number or Instagram, LinkedIn, and everywhere. But book a coffee, ask us questions. We are here to help you guys. Send us an email to contact or book a little call over WhatsApp. All of this is online on our website. And let me know how I can help you guys because everything that I'm sharing today, I'm talking from the heart, from experience of someone that is always looking for talent. I have given so many people job opportunities without even having a job or needing the skills, but they pitch so well. And I'm like, wow, if you were that strategic and you're that passionate, you can add value to the organization. So about 30% of the team of account entrepreneurs right now, probably more, more like 40%, are jobs that we never even advertise. It's people that came and just went, oh, I want to change the world. I love what account spinners is doing. Please find me a job. Can I, I can do this, this, and this. I can add value. I can start today. And we just went, cool, let's give it a go. Started on a project. It worked well. And now they're succeeding, growing. And some of them have even moved to the stage to open operations for us. So everything is possible. But it's very important for us to go back to the beginning of what job do I want? Why do I want it? What's the lifestyle that I'm looking for? And my values, the non-negotiable, and then stop molding your LinkedIn towards it, your social media, and your network through Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, and so forth. What questions do we have? Lucy, Con, Jen, what questions do we have? Does anyone want to share what job? No, Con? <laughs> God's like, don't do this to me. Anyone want to share anything? Any jobs that you guys are applying? Do you want me to have a look at anything? Anything? Hello. Uh, yes. uh, I would like to ask you, so uh, what do you think is the best uh, as the headline in LinkedIn to attract? So you're writing, so, you, so walk me through it. So you see a position at, I don't know, Coca-Cola and you will connect with a HR or the hiring manager. Walk me through the process so we can know because... The title will really, like, it could be, I'll use, I'll use an example. I once was on stage and I saw the managing director of Zero on stage. And Zero is a company that I absolutely love using at Academy of Finesse. So I reached out to her while she was on stage on LinkedIn and I just went, oh my God, you're amazing. I love what you guys are doing. Would love to create more impact together. She got out of stage. She saw my message, put me in touch of, with the director. The next day they were in the office. They, that day in our office, met one of our students and hired one of our students, gave us 90% discount and the first three months for free for every student that joined zero to use in the company. All because it was personalized. I didn't even know this woman. She was on stage. There was maybe 2000 people in the space. Another one is Jules from Tribe. Another one that I saw on stage. I'm like, oh my God, you're amazing. I messaged him that same day he replied. So we, and especially something like LinkedIn, it's not something that you give to your assistant. It's something that you as a leader, especially if you're in recruitment, you check all day long. Recruiters check their LinkedIn a lot more than Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter and everything else. So tell me, what is the job? Because depending on the job and the position, are you asking for an introduction? Are you asking for a job? Are they the hiring manager? So can you see how like all of these will have different angles and everything is possible, but you need to be as genuine 
and as honest as possible. Gotcha. Speaking of hearts, don't over plan it. Mm-hmm. Often people like just over and they stress, just go the same way that you're talking to me, talk to them and just go, hey, saw this role. It's super aligned to my values, everything that I've ever wanted. Can we have a two minute quick call tomorrow? Do you not ask him for an interview? Then when you show up and just go, I saw this blog, da, 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 da. I love the organization because of X, Y, Z. I've studied this. I don't have this in the resume, in the, in this in my experience that I saw that was needed. Is this really needed? Because I want this job more than anything. And then also you being honest, they might go, that's okay. We've put a hundred things on the checklist. If you don't have one of them, it's fine. But how do you stand out? I once, um, Lucy, I had this guy applying for a job with us and he contacted me on Instagram, email, and LinkedIn at the same time. Which Mm -hmm. one side you might go is like stalker. The other (laughs) one you go, well, you've done your research. Mm -hmm. So initially I looked at it and I went from stalker to you've done your research. I just went, you know what? I will reply. I sent him an email and said, thanks, I'll call you tomorrow. Then he just, he messaged me back just going, don't worry about calling. Coffee's on me. Where are you tomorrow? I need five minutes of your time. Met with him. He was 30 times more than I could have afforded at the time. And I just went, can't afford him. Then he messaged me on Christmas and New Year's Eve, really personalizing it. So I met with him, it would have been like end of November, beginning of December. We had just launched Academy Spinners um, campus at that time. Then he sent me a personalized message. January 1st week, he contacted me and just went, I really want to join the organization. Can we chat? I'll start on a contract. Let's do it together. And he worked with us on a project for 10 weeks. And he was one of the best investments of my life. Unbelievable, this man. And he was strategic. His background was German. So he was very organized and he was strategic. Yeah. He really wanted to get my attention. How can you not get someone's attention by going in three different mm-hmm. platforms? Don't mm-hmm. stalk like in the sense, you know, <laughs> be careful. There's a fine line between like showing that you've done your research and stalking, but yeah. But what he wanted in the end, and he learned so much by working with us. We learned so much from him. And 10 weeks later, like we had achieved everything we needed. He was happy. And then we each continue our own paths. And I have the best, like if anyone ever asks for a reference, I'll be like, he's amazing. Get him on your company. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think, um, I'm just actually seeing on LinkedIn, there's a possibility to like record a short video, sort of like an introduction. Do you yeah. find that helpful? I or? haven't seen, I know it's one of the new features. I know that recently in the last maybe five or six months, you can put in um, LinkedIn kind of like stories. Mm-hmm. And I also know that now you can put like the pronunciation of your name and a couple of videos. Mm-hmm. I mean, the world is going towards video, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, platforms like Google now can even identify like if you type in smile or mom it will identify your mother in your phone these days like it's just crazy how they're able to figure all of that out mm-hmm. but I still think that search engine optimizing and using the keywords right now the technology is still better mm-hmm. putting the video just shows that you've gone above and beyond so it just makes you you get another tick but I mm-hmm. wouldn't not hire someone if they haven't done a video like for me and not everyone like I love a camera and a video, but I don't know how I would feel about recording a video for a job. Like, it's not something that I would enjoy recording. Like, I'm happy to record a video tip for you guys. The recording, like, hello, hi, I'm me. Like, I don't even know how to start the job, the, <laughs> the video. So I don't know if you feel comfortable in doing it, give it a go. But it's not something that will make a huge difference. But not having your, let me show you guys. I mean, I think that would be a good idea. Let me open my LinkedIn and you guys can kind of order to my LinkedIn. And remember my LinkedIn, I'm not using for job reasons. I just use it for networking. But I think more than the video, Lucy, it's not missing out on any of the other um, the things such as the banner, the information. Mm-hmm. And then right like below your name, I think they call it like the headline um, so as you have their ever-winning impact, um, entrepreneur, speaker, and investor. So what do you, because I find that um, from different sources, what should be there, it differentiates. 
So what do you find is, is the best? Is it like the position you're actually looking for or should there be what you have already achieved or I think you know what I mean? What it, yeah, definitely. What is it that you try and achieve? So what you've achieved will most likely be on the description. So like I showed you guys here, these are the highlights. It's always three points are always nice in the highlights. Mm -hmm. highlights and highlights so what are you trying to achieve of attention so in this case i'm making it very clear that i'm not applying for a job because mm -hmm. a lot of people go like do you want a job and i'm like no <laughs> so impact i care about impact i'm not just an entrepreneur that sets up businesses i care about the sustainable impact that we're going to have i love doing public speaking and I get paid to do presentations. So I've put myself, instead of looking straight into the camera, I put myself on the microphone in a natural environment for me. And investors, because I'm looking at investing to minimum a business a month. So if anyone has a good business, let's talk. Mm -hmm. The way that I've got. So here I've put that I'm in Sydney, New South Wales, which always makes it attractive. I work with the whole world where people like the idea that you're in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, I've got over 500 connections. I didn't even know that I had 7,000 people following me. I didn't even know that because then you've got your own community. Then um, what else? Then I've got a little bit about me and it's in my, like in my tone of voice. Let me see if I can, yeah. So it's got a little bit of my personality as well. Call me crazy, but I love seeing others happy and succeeding. So I've got mm. a little bit about me and call me crazy. It is crazy, well, crazy, not crazy <laughs> today. <laughs> I've got the different organizations that I've set up or projects that I've contracted and done whether it's the government and so forth the courses that I have done and then this is always important being endorsed mm. the things that you do well and recommendations as an entrepreneur I don't need them but if you're looking for a job it's always good to have at least 10 and can you see I've given 13 because people are always asking me for it I mean not always but whenever they ask I try to help mm. done a good job yeah so have a look so in your case what are you looking for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the moment, I'm I'm more to, I, I'm trying to figure it out. To be honest, if I should go um, <laughs> through the path of being an employee or just approach my own project yeah. and go that way, so I'm both of them have unlimited opportunities. But yeah. That's until you don't figure out what you want, no one's mm. going to buy your product or hire you when you're in this in-between. I spoke to this girl the other day from the United Nations and I met her volunteering in the UN. I'm like, oh my gosh, she was so organized. And I went to interview her. And the first thing she said is, I don't know what I want. I'm so lost. I've been lost for the last five years. And I just went, <laughs> this interview finishes now. You know, because she was really professional as a volunteer for the UN. But when I was interviewing, I'm like, if you don't know what you want, how am I going to be able to get any results out of you in our organization? Even if you volunteer for free, if you don't know what you want. So I think it's important for you to go. It's okay to have a job that pays the bill. So maybe work literally at a cafe at $30 an hour in the morning and you work there from 6 until 11 or 12. And then the rest of the day, you're drop shipping or crowdfunding a campaign or doing some paid ads. But I think it's very important. And... The reality, Lucy, is that we're never going to be 100% ready for anything. Like, I launched a camp spinners when I was 26. Like, when have you ever heard of a girl starting a school with no investors at the age of 26 approved by the Department of Immigration? Like, it's mental. Was I ready? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But I wanted it more than anything, and I was willing to take the risk because I knew that it was better for me to take the risk doing something that I love than waiting for the right moment. And this is the conversation that I had with Con the other day on Saturday when I was helping him with this interview. I just went, he's like, I'm not 100% ready. I'm like, Good, but just go for it. He's like, do you want the job? It's just like more than anything. And you went and you go through the sides. Like I had a project. It's not about applying for a job, but I had a project that was rejected 100 times in the last month. Literally 100 times. I've received 100 no's. But I got a yes at the end. Mm. And now we're going to impact at least 500,000 students for free through this money that we got approved in the yes. And this is like no one sees. Like I don't post on Instagram the fact that I'm, I get four hours of sleep, the fact that I'm dealing with a billion like challenges every day. No one, uh, Con is laughing because he knew me since I was 18. And he's seeing <laughs> the other side. No one sees that. Kiana knows me. She sees the other side of me showing up to meetings where like I'm so tired that I haven't even taken the pajamas. Sometimes it's like midday and I haven't even had breakfast yet and I'm still in my pajamas because it's just never ending. But when you're doing what you love, 
you're able to focus so and you're able to set goals you're able to get results and it's okay for you to make a decision and then just go this is not for me but at least you try and then move but just make a decision Lucy just decide and maybe decide I've got this friend who manages two businesses he managed one business from I don't know 7 a.m until one o'clock takes a lunch break and then he goes to the other office in the same building a level up and he goes from 1 30 until night time so maybe make a decision Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you work for someone the rest of the week, you're an entrepreneur. And remember, there's seven days in a week. There's no such thing as working three days or five days, Monday to Friday. You don't have to. You can shuffle it around and you can go, I'm going to work in the mornings. I don't know, as receptionist in a hotel. And that will pay me, I don't know, $2,000. After tax, maybe $1,200, $1,500, and that's enough. And then the rest, I'm going to put all the money into the business. Just work it out. Mm-hmm. 100%. That's why I'm grateful for this period of time, as you mentioned many times, like, we're actually so blessed with this opportunity to reflect on the life and what we want to do. So I'm using that time for personal development and, and figure out. Take yes, 100%. So if you've just done a free digital marketing course, get a charity, help them ask for testimonial and ask them to introduce you to a potential customer that will pay for your service. Mm-hmm. And then you start doing the paid ad. You're like, oh my God, I hate doing paid ads. I want to do video editing for TikTok. Perfect. I'm going to that. And it's from five, it's making mistakes and finding the thing that we don't love that we're going to get closer, but take action. Anything like Lucy, what day is today? Today is September 21st. Mm-hmm. I want you messaging me on Instagram tomorrow on the two actions you've decided. And it could be dividing a day, entrepreneur, intrapreneur. It doesn't matter. But take action and baby steps. You're not going to... <laughs> call your mom and your grandmother and say give me a million dollars no stop saying yes that's a big yeah, thing for me as well because you know yesterday was late so <laughs> just really be patient as well and yeah, yeah we need to have patient but patience with persistence mm-hmm. patient out of the sense of i'm going to wait for the recruiters to call call the recruiter yeah. and you open them, just go really want the job can you give me feedback and or what are the chances of me getting? Because I really want this. What else can I do? Can I work there for, for a week? Or can I submit a project? Or can I have a second interview? Because mm-hmm. we are, as companies, desperate for talent. Desperate. It's like, there was, like, right now, at Kansas, we have the best team ever, ever. For the first three years, my full-time job was firing people. Literally. It was unbelievable. The laziness or people manipulating us like it was just ridiculous so I I started building new skills for and I remember one thing and it was actually my fault interviewing campus looks amazing on Instagram our campus our office we work the stage everything looks amazing but it takes a lot of work to do that Mm -hmm. people thought that by joining campus they were going to be having champagne with really successful (laughs) entrepreneurs and you do get to do that after you've worked for 21 and a half hours a day. Mm-hmm. So we were hiring people that loved what we did, but they didn't have the energy to do it. They just wanted lifestyle to look good on their Instagram. So their Instagram looked really fancy, but they weren't doing any work. I had other people that we hired that on resume looked really good, but they had too much experience and they weren't willing to do the work anymore. Remember, I hired this general manager. He worked with us for 12 12- weeks and he only stayed for 12 weeks because I was living overseas because I flew back to fire him we had an office at WeWork and we had the office in Piedmont he in 12 weeks went once for 30 minutes to the campus to see the students how can you be the general manager he was so proud of him and his work that he thought he was superior and couldn't spend time with the team and the students because he's general managing Mm-hmm. Like emails to people and I just went to do it. I was flicking mm-hmm. out of the office because <laughs> I need results. So this is why the lifestyle is so important. Kiara mm-hmm. has messaged me many times on the weekend. Can we record a video? On a weekend, I'm like, you've got three kids and a husband in the middle of lockdown. How can you want to record videos? <laughs> but it's aligned to your values and she's got the energy and so forth. So Lucy, go back, do your ikigai, yeah. organize and just maybe join Kiara was it last week that we did the find your life purpose I think it was last week I think it was on Tuesday yes, yes. 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 watch I it to... again I remember mm-hmm. yeah go back I to the to... activity mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that was super helpful. You you mentioned so many things. I like wrote everything down and I'm going to be taking the course as well because I find that really, really important. And what I've been also, uh, the, the, the books I've been reading on the thing like among, I also find it's a lot around identity and values so yes. much. So this is what I'm digging into and hopefully that's going to give me clarity on everything yeah. <laughs> that book is magic Lucy I you really I really found myself as well in the book the, but, of the thing like a monk yeah remember you mentioned yeah it's 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 fantastic yeah. and the, I've, I've been following Jay for for a long time and uh, came across so many wonderful uh, brilliant people yeah. um, for personal development and but this mm -hmm. one these ones are powerful 100% mm -hmm. so I have power as my J she's my J oh I my can imagine Shetty. yeah <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> she's a powerful human being <laughs> 100% oh. but it's just about like guys it's the common sense of doing what you love mm. It's just that, like, when you read Jay's book, I mean, besides the fact that he was a monk, so that's another little different world that he lived. But mm -hmm. when he talks about before him being a monk and now post-monk, all of that is common sense. I think just those chapters where he's explained about the minimalism of being a monk and the feelings and the meditation, that's a different world to what we're used to in our tech world. But everything else, it's common sense. But Paula, common sense is not that common anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So just, but just go back into yourself. Like, mm -hmm. why did you say this? When you worked in, what we spoke about last week, like who were the best managers you had in your life? And why were they? Who were the top heroes in your life? And what values do they have? And you will see. And then you just go, what companies have these values? Or what mm -hmm. values do I want to bring into my organization? Like, I always think like every second is so powerful in our life. So whether you're working for yourself or for someone, how can you add value to your life, to your health, to your community? Yeah, so link it back. Try to make it as simple as possible and don't ever put pressure on being perfect because your CV will never be perfect. Your first Instagram post will never be perfect. Your first paid campaign, whatever it is you're going to be doing, it's going to have many trial and error and adapting and you're always going to get better, but don't worry. Take Take time. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you're adapting and getting better, a little bit better every day. <laughs> oh, guys, the big hugs. Nice seeing you guys. Thanks for joining. The session is recorded, so you guys get to watch it as many times as you want. If you want to copy of the slides, message us. And I think very important thing for you guys, I'll get Kiara. Kiara, maybe email everybody the um, Find Your Life Purpose course. Yes. And speak to Annalise and give like everybody like a discount code. So just put sure. it on the email and we can send it to you guys. But my recommendation is take that course. It will take, if you go fast, it'll take you maybe four hours. And if you go through all activities, maybe eight hours and just helps you connect, like invest in yourself and connecting with yourself. And you'll see that everything else will flow. And those activities, I go back to them every couple of months. So that course is yours and then go back and redo your SWOT analysis, redo your disc profile, redo your um, work-life guides for you to see like what are you getting productivity and what skills are you using? So everything there is a really solid foundation, but you need to always reuse it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, happy Tuesday. Thank Salt you so you much. Bye. Thank you, Paula. Have, have a good day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thanks. Bye. Bye.